Robert String, and if you're watching this, then this is the first video uh, for the EPA Certification 608 Study Guide. I initially started this to uh, help my students here with their EPA certification so that if they missed the lecture or they needed to see a lecture again, they could go back and review it. And what I found out was actually these guys only represented less than 3% of the total viewers out of about 30,000 views in less than two months. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you what you need to know and how to order to learn, best learn, uh, what you need to know for studying for the EPA exam. So if you start off with thermodynamics, understanding warmer to cooler, and the videos with enthalpy and heat, it's about a 45 minute lecture that covers latent sensible heat, enthalpy of water, pressure and boiling points, builds into the PT charts, and then you can master the refrigeration cycle, which that pretty much will cover the introduction to the EPA certification for just the introduction. So if you can master those things, and nothing against the videos that just show the test and the answers and showing practice tests after practice tests, that's a good reinforcement tool to check your understanding. But with a little bit more study, I think you can understand why the question's asking what it is and what the correct answer is. For example, one of the videos has refrigerant charging cylinders that many people don't see anymore. It's back from 1990s, early 90s at that. So we had one here in the shop. It's about a five minute video. Once you see that video, you'll understand what they're talking about with the question of why it needs to be vented, the refrigerant that's in a refrigerant charging cylinder, instead of just venting it off the top like we used to. So if you go into chapter nine with the refrigeration technology book, ozone, chlorine, you learn about ODP, global warming potential, refrigerant types, pure compound blends, temperature glide, fractionation, refrigerant safety, oils, basic regulations with refrigerants, and then you talk about the different types of refrigerant uh, certifications. When you get into the types, type one, two, three, there's separate lectures for that, ranging from five minutes all the way up to 20 minutes for type two. Recovery cycle or claim needs to be known. Recovery cylinders, the methods of recovery and tips, all those are lab activity videos that you can see hands on. It's not just part of a lecture from the PowerPoint, but the kids are actually performing these tasks out in the, out in the lab. Type three is the biggest one that I've had over the last 15 years teaching this subject, most of the questions about, because not everybody really sees a type three commercial chiller type system. So all that terminology is new to them. The rupture disc, evaporator charging valve, hydrostatic test tube kit, that's all covered with some pictures in type three. Now these are my first videos, and they're not by any means high quality. Uh, there's some noises in the background when the kids were working in the lab, um, door slamming. It's in high school, so you might even hear a bell ring, and I'm sorry for that. But uh, the goal is to make better videos as the years progress. And I do believe this works because I've been doing this for 15 years and I've certified hundreds of technicians, including these guys here. And they've all been certified. And they can show you their cards. Check it out. What do you think of this system? So if you like the videos, please leave a comment. And if you can, at the very least, hit like. Thank you.